this is an amazing experience that we're having. And um, I'm going to take the part about the weather and just the city itself. And then why don't you talk a little bit about the festival? All right. I can do that. Okay, I've got to say this about the weather. I love the weather here in <laughs> Montreal. <laughs> you know, we've had rain, we've had sunshine, and even hot sunshine. And we've had uh, all kinds of, I mean, all the streets are blocked off, and people are walking in the street, and there, there's bands playing, and there's musical numbers, and I mean, I just feel like we've been thoroughly welcomed here in Montreal. I've seen some of the beautiful architecture and tasted some of the great food that's here. And I have to tell you, in all seriousness, that in a heartbeat, I would come back and visit Montreal because I think it's a wonderful place, the great atmosphere here. And about the festival, what do you think? Uh, so far, you've been really well organized. And our experience was showing one of our films, showing The Land Before Time, and even our garage film, Banjo Woodball Cat, brought back a flood of memories for me. We haven't seen either of those films in years. So uh, watching the people's reaction to, to the films and seeing, gosh, you've got a crowd here this year. I don't know how well it's gone in the past, but it, it looks like you're a very, very excited and, and passionate audience for all the films that you're offering. I often think sometimes, what got me to go into animation? And, and when I answered the question for myself, I said, why did I go into animation? Years and years ago, I think when I was about four years old, I saw my first animated film, and it was Snow White. And Disney had done something that no one had ever done before. He made a full-length feature film out of just drawings and trying to get the characters in that film to act, you know, to seem real and to give you a feeling of emotion. And the story is really strong. A, a woman decides that there's another woman more beautiful than her, so she's gonna go kill her. And that's the premise of the story. It's pretty strong. So anyway, when I saw this movie, I thought, what in the world was that? It didn't look like the world I live in. And I went back several times, said, you know, it's beautiful to look at. The colors are beautiful, the jokes are funny. I, I immediately came home and started to learn how to draw. You know, I, I wanted to draw what I saw in the movie. And kind of from four years old, I, I was just going like a, you know, like a truck towards animation. I wanted to do it. My inspiration uh, wasn't until I got in the door and I started learning more and more about these, especially these nine old men, the key guys that were working at Disney. And they became, the fact that I was even in the same building with them, I was like awestruck and I felt like, oh, I'm not worthy. <laughs> and can I do that? I don't know if I can do this. And I'm, I think it was a, about a weekend, I met Don, and uh, and he was actually animating. He wasn't a trainee; he was actually animating. And uh, uh, about three weeks after that, they showed us Pinocchio, and I thought I was going to die. I watched Pinocchio, and I, went, I can't believe that men made this movie. I don't think children would get as much out of Pinocchio as an adult would. It's just a marvelous film. So. Uh, I ended up working as an assistant to Frank Thomas for two years while I was doing personal screen tests. And eventually, uh, I got a chance to actually animate on a, a picture called Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2. And this man became my not only a friend, but an inspiration because he knew so much already about animation and, and he had the ability to teach and pass it on and pass it on so much to me that it turned lights on for me to actually Climb, climb that ladder of each level of, of animation until you're finally a pro. So we've been able to craft maybe 12 motion pictures. The one that I still cotton to, the one I really liked the most, was clear back to the first motion picture we made. This is odd. Uh, a Secret of Nim. And I, and I think the reason that I like that film more than any of the others is because it felt more honest. It felt like it was something that we, we fashioned in our heads, something we felt very strongly about, and we were able to get it onto the screen at a greater percentage than maybe films that followed. So oftentimes as you get into um, your career in the business of making films, you make compromises to be able to please the marketing, to be able to be sure the picture makes money and all of that. And so many of your ideas, which could be really, very fun and very, very, um, Fantasy oriented, very, very exciting and different. Sometimes you have to pull those out and then it becomes hard. American Tale was a little more generous. We were able to work very good in American Tale, but in Land Before Time, that was very, very carefully controlled. And so a lot of the wild imagination ideas you might have went by the wayside. And as, it, as we got into our career, more and more 
the marketing personnel would come and say, I want this, take that out, I want this and this and this, but changed. You know, so it really wasn't what you conceptualized in the beginning. That was hard on me. Uh, with Secret of Nim, it was the story that we, we originally wanted to tell. We've come up with eight titles of projects that we've either bought the rights or were given the rights to books. Um, the first one, the, the, the top of our list, is to make Dragon's Lair the movie. And uh, we put together a script, and we think it's pretty funny. It's still very tongue-in-cheek to, uh, to mm -hmm. go along with what the movie was, or the game was. Uh, it's a prequel, though. We're going to find out where Dirk the Daring came from, how he was introduced to Daphne, who Mordrock is, and all these characters will come out and, and give the audience a full story of what was going on behind the scenes and what eventually became the game. Hmm. Well, I can't tell you a thing about any of the others. Um, but we put together a, a really nice video presentation of, of the projects we're doing, and. Uh, we're hopeful that this year will be the year we can uh, put together financing to get these finally on the road. What you're not saying is that there's some of those projects he's talking about that really are CG. Yes, and I think true. the reality of the fact is nowadays in the atmosphere, uh, if economic atmosphere we're in, is you've got to do some CG. You've got to because that's what sells. And of course, our great moment I think will be the moment that we can have a uh, tour de force and we can go back in and do a traditional, because I'm very excited about that. I don't plan on turning loose of that. I think it's um, something that it's an art form that if we lose it, it'll be a very bad thing. We should not lose it. Uh, oil painting did not get rid of watercolor. So it seems like we should be able to do both, and we should be able to find the money to make sure those are realized.